I think it's time to break down core political ideology to its most fundamental levels. So the first obvious question is why? And the answer is quite simple. Whenever I see something out there in the political discourse where no one seems to really be talking about, and if they're talking about, they don't really take it to the same level that I'm seeing myself, I feel the need to add that particular discourse to the conversation. And in this particular event, yes, some people do talk about breaking down political ideology to more of a fundamental level, but it's always way too complicated. Ideology is, resides in this underlying selection where some things, although you know them, you behave, act as if you don't know them. My ideology tells me I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. I think that was partly his point. But whatever, it's just, whatever he's saying, just way too complicated. And idiots uh, are very susceptible to social pressure because they don't have the deferral of gratification and the long-term goal-oriented mindset to allow them to deal with being called mean names and, you know, whatever. Like, I mean, you've got a bigger and longer goal. Still way too complicated. But you know what we need to do? We need to start giving fucking money. White people, give your fucking money, your fucking house, your fucking property. We need it fucking off. You need to reparate black and indigenous people right now. Okay, that's a little bit too basic and just plain retarded. Oh yeah, and by the way, this lady happens to be a teacher. Yeah, a teacher. Okay, and that third clip, it's in there for shock value. It really has nothing to do with trying to understand political ideology because this lady obviously does not have the intelligence to be able to do so. But in the first two clips, you have people, philosophers, psychologists, trying to understand fundamentally what political ideology is. The way that I can describe it is pretty simple. Either you're part of a herd or you're part of a pack. Now, what are the characteristics of a herd? Well, they're grass eaters, usually, or some kind of plant eaters, where they move together in a large herd because it protects them from predators. They tend to follow just aimlessly one, one particular leader over another at any given time. And the ones that get picked off are the old and weak ones at the edge of the group that happen to be either lagging behind or show some kind of weakness to predators that exist out there. Now, what about a pack? What are the characteristics of a pack? Well, it's a group of hunters that goes out looking for prey animals. Once again, the, the weak or the young or whoever happens to be one that's very easy to grab and eat. Now, who takes more chances, the herd or the pack? Well, if you consider it, the herd actually takes more chances because you're part of this huge collective. And if you're in the center, for example, you're pretty safe. And on the fringes, you're less safe but in general, you're just sort of moving along together. And as a large herd, the larger your herd is, the safer it happens to be. With a pack, if one wolf breaks a leg, that wolf can't hunt anymore, and that wolf's going to die. And this is even worse for individual predators, but for this particular analogy, I'll be using more of a pack sense. What are, what are some of the other characteristics? Well, conservatives on one side, being the right, and then we have the left which has a number of different names, progressives, liberals, um, Democrats. There's a lot of different labels, but if we get rid of all those labels and just say right and left, and I'm also speaking in generalities here as well because not everyone on the left and not everyone on the right happen to be a part of this particular mentality, but you can see very strong divides between the two. For example, conservatives or people on the right tend to take a lot less risks than people on the left. People on the left tend to be more collectivist. People on the right tend to be more traditionalist, more individualistic. Now the herd doesn't actually care if individual animals within that herd actually get picked off as long as the main herd survives and keeps moving towards its direction. Whereas a pack, if you try to pick off one of the individuals, they will fight tooth and nail. Unless, of course, there happen to be individual hunters, that's a little different. So how does this relate to actual politics? Well, if you think about it, for example, Stephen Colbert got in a hot water recently for insulting uh, with his cock holster joke with, between Putin and Trump. And you'll notice that nobody really cares about the whole fire Colbert thing. They ignore it. Why? Because the herd is the sacred object. The herd is the big other, as Zizek would put it. The herd is the one that is more important than any individual. 
So rather than going after just Stephen Colbert, it would be a lot more devastating Is it, if you said this was a systemic problem across all of uh, the late night shows and tried to go after all of them, saying that they're all like this, they all happen to have this homophobia, they hate gay people, just paint them with a very broad brush across, which is unfair, but it would be a much more viable tactic to actually take these people down. Whereas on the right, you have a number of different individuals, and if you go after one of those prominent figures, not only do you see a lot of other people come to that person's defense, but you also see a lot of other packs saying, well, this particular pack is different from my pack, so I don't really care. It's kind of an interesting dynamic to just look out for. Another example is Milo Yiannopoulos with his comments about pedestry or pedophilia, whatever you really want to call that entire subject, but you would see people on the right that would explain how they felt based on the ideas that were presented, and people on the left that would just all attack Milo. Now, if it happened with Stephen Colbert, the right is now attacking Stephen Colbert because, I mean, to be honest, they don't really care about the actual thing behind it all. In fact, they'd rather just everyone makes gay jokes if they feel like making gay jokes but they realize there is a hypocrisy between the left and the right in this particular subject. So they're going after him as a target just because they don't like him. But in so doing, the left just meanwhile completely ignores this particular, because you're not attacking the right target. On the right, you attack individuals. On the left, you attack the herd. Now the herd, they would come to the defense of. Whatever herd that happens to be, whether it be the left in general, whether it happens to be a subset on the left, on the right, if you're attacking an individual, then that individual will defend himself. If you're attacking a pack or a group of the right, then that particular pack will defend itself. But you'll see other subsets of the right not really too concerned with it. They will weigh in, they will give their opinion, and they might defend on an ideological or ideas basis, but they're not necessarily going to throw their entire weight behind it like the left would if you attacked the herd. Now let's consider methods of control within politics for both the left and the right. Now the masters of the left, the politicians, the Democrats, the people in charge, the David Brocks of the world, the ones who manufacture consent on the left realize the only thing they have to do is steer the herd in a certain direction. They don't need to actually convince any individual person, which is why you'll see it, it's sort of like an Indian putting on a buffalo head and running in front of the herd causing all the entire herd to jump over a cliff and impale themselves on rocks on the bottom so that the rest of the Indians can come in and then you know pick off the carcasses clean that's essentially the way that the left operates when it comes to controlling the narratives in the herd because if you can create a false sense of the consensus moving in a certain direction then that herd will actually move in that direction so they tried the same thing on the right. They, they said, okay, this has worked really well for this particular group of people that we're trying to control. Let's do the same thing on the right using the same tactics. And it failed miserably because they didn't understand the fundamental differences between the right and the left. On the right, it's a number of individuals looking at various ideas coming to similar consensus and forming packs around that rather than the left being a herd mentality where all you have to do is show that the herd is moving in one direction for the rest to follow, you, follow. On the right, you have to essentially convince every single individual. And that's just simply that the particular masters of the left are incapable of doing on the right. And also you're losing the middle as well because they see the left jumping off the cliff. They see the fracturing. They see the identity politics pulling the herd into 40 different directions. And they're saying, okay, would I rather be a part of a herd which isn't really providing the same safety, is not moving in the right direction, is actually bad for me, or would you rather be part of a pack on the right? You can also take this analogy and project it into the future, because the herd, if you will, on the left, is fracturing, breaking into smaller pieces. They're going to try to recoalesce and find a new direction. And the question is, what type of direction are they going to pick? And it's usually some pseudo-religion, whether it be statism, progressivism, or some type of core ideology centered around certain people being leaders of that. 
But who are they going to pick for leaders? Well, the news media is out because nobody trusts them. Hollywood's out because they're losing relevance by the day. Politicians are out because, what, Tulsi Gabbard's the only one that actually makes any sense? I mean, there's a lot of desire to get behind Bernie Sanders, but since he is so compromised and so corrupt, it would just fundamentally not work. Then you see the uh, leftist Tea Party, these uh, people that go and scream at town halls. And they have to realize that that's manufactured. So it's going to take you in the exact same direction that you've been going, and then ultimately the left will fracture once again. So what is the herd left to do with no ideological direction and no clear leaders to guide them to that direction, and with the current system actually collapsing in around them? Well, it's going to be an exploitable vacuum that's created. Now either someone will come in and exploit that, and do it effectively and point a new direction for the herd to actually move, or they're going to have to break off and take up more of a pack mentality, which a lot of these people are just simply not capable of because it is so much more comfortable, it is so much more emotionally satisfying to be a part of a herd rather than to actually think for yourself and take the risk of actually going out there and hunting, essentially. So this entire analogy, at least in the future projection, happens to fit in with my idea of there only being two political parties in the United States that gain prominence after the Democrats completely collapse, being right authoritarians, which should be represented by the herd, and then right libertarians, which should be represented by the packs and the individual hunters, the individual predators. Now bear in mind the actual labels that are associated with the new libertarian right and the new authoritarian right would not fit within the normal consensus of Republican and Libertarians. They might have to be named something else to make it palatable to these herd masses that happen to flood into the authoritarian right. But effectively, you would see the ideologies fit those particular aspects that we would know them as today to slowly transition into over time. Actually, well, slowly... I say slowly, who knows, it could be six months to a year before the entire Democratic Party. Actually, give it this, the midterm elections. The Democrats keep losing the midterm elections, and there's no turnaround. And Trump actually does a reasonable job, which so far it looks like he's doing. That's going to continue to slide in Democrats. They still haven't figured it out. They still haven't put a positive message on the page. And they still haven't actually ginned up any of their voters besides saying, oh, well, isn't Trump so evil? Trump's a Russian puppet. Oh, we hate Trump. We're going to impeach him with no evidence whatsoever. It's so devoid of logic that it's just not going to work. And they cemented their own demise with this whole political correctness, feminism, identity, politics. But more importantly, their fatal mistake was fracturing the herd.